talk rubbish, boy. This is not the place nor the time. Oh, so yeah, man. Ad. <laughs> oh, so yeah, man. <laughs> okay, cool. I'm just gonna leave the sound on this the whole time. And okay, crank it up. It's gonna be amazing. Make it louder than us. Oh shit! And I just yeah, 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 yeah man. <laughs> it's gonna be an infinite loop. Just like greatness. A loop poop. Okay, cool. Poopshoot.com. <laughs> Cool jazz man, yeah. Yeah. Apple crisp. Yeah, man. <laughs> Just keep it going. Yeah. Just like loop poop. Yeah, man. All right, sorry. You gave up on that pretty quick, sir. I thought I went way too long. I think, uh, why don't you tell the audience what your thought process behind that joke was? Um, well, I mean, since pretty much every week is the perfect podcast, <laughs> I wanted to be able to show like what an error looks like, just so you know people don't get too used to perfection. You fucking got me. <laughs> you fucked me on that one. I made you wear the cuckold's horn. <clears throat> <clears throat> Okay, so we have to start off this podcast on a somber note. You know why that is, sir? No. Sonny Chiba passed away. Yeah. Um, R.I.P. He's no legend. I think a lot of North American audiences might know him as Hattori Hanzo in Kill Bill, uh, but his career spanned more than six decades and hundreds of on-screen credits. Throughout the 1960s, Chiba made no less than 50 movies and TV shows in his home country of Japan. And that was before his international breakthrough in the 70s. So, shout out to uh, Sonny Chiba. He's done a shit ton of movies. He's up there with, like, Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, you know. Mm -hmm. All those guys. So, Chai and Fat. Yeah. I don't really have anything else to say about it. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to say it's a somber note because we're talking about Cruel Jaws. 
No. <laughs> it's a celebration. It is. <laughs> okay, so let's get on to the actual news. Well, that was news, I guess. Yeah. But that wasn't my nerd news topic. Uh, we're on nerd news uh, right now, so let's go to the nerd news. Nerd news? Dealer's preference, sir. What's your nerd news? Oh, you want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm on. <laughs> yeah, I'm on. <laughs> what was that for, by the way? I don't know. Because I heard the reggae music in the ad. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, let's see here. this up those are my toenails on the floor by the way (laughs) Uh, (laughs) just needs a trim so there is finally some like first looks (laughs) there are first looks at uh, Clerks 3 that has just started filming um, just this month um, in um, Leonardo, New Jersey so yeah um I, Anything jump out of you? I didn't see, like, I saw that they're, they started filming, but I didn't really. Yeah, watch. I think really it was just kind of like a, a thing where, I mean, the rundown of this this quote from Kevin Smith is essentially like, when he first started making movies, it was like, he made them for like, you know, Generation Z or whatever it was, and like, people were in their 20s, and now people are in their 40s and 50s, and like, they're not gonna like, you know, it's made for their growing audience, not really for like, ooh the new uh like a a younger audience but uh essentially yeah it's like i don't know if i think we talked about this before where like it's essentially like randall they took just what happened to kevin smith randall has like a massive heart attack and then he's like my fucking life has been wasted (laughs) and so he creates a uh he wants to create a movie so essentially makes clerks three or clerks one so cool yeah, I'm pretty pumped because, I don't know, I guess that's really like kind of like a half news thing, but anybody get a half? No, that's full like, news in my book. Yeah. Um, cool. But, yeah, I think, I don't know, I'm pretty pumped for it just in general. Yeah, for sure. So, um, do you think he'll make news draws after that? Probably not. Cause I, think that's, I think that's like a dead thing at this Dude, point. Dude, no. The one thing that could be better than cruel draws, news draws. If it's anything like Tusk, it would be shit. But, sadly, I think that was, like, the only one that sounded good out of all the three of the ones he had planned. Mm-hmm. But, you know Kevin Smith is? He, like, goes all over the place with his ideas. He's like, I want to make a Clerks animated movie. And it, like, never happened. It became, like, the Jan Silent Bob groovy cartoon movie that was, like, the shits. And he put Clerks 3 on hold to make Tusk. He's like... Forget Clerks 3, I've got a new idea for Tusk. It's like back when he was just smoking so much weed and then he had a huge heart attack and he's like, oh wait, I was wasting all this time making shitty movies. So, go ahead and uh, tell us what your uh, nerd or your news is. My nerd news (coughs) is uh, there's a release date and trailer for the next Nick Cage movie. He's cranking them out, man. It's called um, Prisoners of the Ghost Land. And I'm going to read the synopsis. In the treacherous frontier city of Samurai Town, a ruthless bank robber, Nicholas Cage, is sprung from jail by a wealthy warlord whose adopted granddaughter has gone missing. The governor offers the prisoner his freedom in exchange for retrieving the runaway. Strapped into a leather suit that will self-destruct within five days, the bandit sets off on a journey to find the young woman and his own path to redemption. So it's pretty much Escape from New York for him, yeah. but with Nicolas Cage. And uh, it's actually not the first time I heard about that movie. Really? Yeah, I was. I think like a month ago I heard about it, and I was like, oh, interesting. You know, it's another Nick Cage film. So he's not really doing like Hollywood films anymore. He's doing like these little, you know, like something that's probably wouldn't get made mm-hmm. um, in like a Hollywood setting. But that doesn't mean it's a bad movie. It's just interesting. Yeah, and that's I still think Pig is like one of the best movies I've seen in a long time. So hopefully he can. It's one of the only there. movies I've seen in a long time. <laughs> you saw Cruel Jaws. Well, in theaters. Yeah. Like. Yeah. <clears throat> Speaking of which, what do you think about that? Like, how do you think theaters are going to be going the way of the dodo, or what? Um, no, I think they'll become less popular over time and become like more niche. Yeah. It's going to be like LPs and shit, and right. then it might make a resurgence, but right. I feel like. 
along with TV and like Hollywood, they're they've already started shifting, like dragging and screaming to streaming. And it's yeah. Like, and when when you have like David Lynch makes the Twin Peaks series, and it's pretty much like yeah, at the same quality as all of his movies, yeah. but just a, it's an eighteen hour movie basically. Yeah, it's like why would you not do that? <laughs> and, you know, be boxed into the j- traditional movie right formula. You don't have we'll to see. go to the theater and listen to a bunch of bastards talking the whole time. Yeah, and have to like try to see the screen because the bulb is so dim. <laughs> we should get. We should bring our fucking flashlights, dude. I'm telling you, that's a good idea. Yeah, we should bring laser pointers too. <laughs> I bring my my Vuzuzu horn. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> bring all the most annoying things that have ever been part of a fucking sporting event. <laughs> I just got a slide whistle for some reason. Like. Yeah, like no one can hear it. It's like, okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. You know what the next segment is, sir. Uh, recommendation! Nation! Yaman. Yeah, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> oh, fuck. Whoa. Gotcha. <laughs> you did. Actually, I got my soul. Um, okay. So this week, I recommend... I'm like pig again. <laughs> I'm like, I have nothing to say. Just kidding. Uh, So this week, I'm going to recommend the Super Mario RPG Super Nintendo Legend of the Seven Stars game, if I haven't already... Have I recommended that before? Uh, If you have, it was probably a long time ago. Yeah. It was like in our OG days. it's worth recommending every time. That's true. Maybe I should just do this every week. (laughs) Um, But uh, mainly, you know, it's just called like Super Mario RPG. It's... Most people don't say the full title. <laughs> but, like, um, it was, like, the last Mario game, which I didn't know. This was the last Mario game uh, made for the Super Nintendo mm. in 96. Um, but it was uh, made by Square, which is, you know, now Square Enix. But, like, I don't know, like, if I really... I guess I do have to explain kind of what this game is about, because people probably watching this, not everybody's played it, but I think it's since I've played it, and we've, we would know so much about it that it's kind of like... It's like me explaining Star Trek to you, mm-hmm. you know? So I'll, I'll, I guess I'll explain it to people, obviously, that haven't played it or seen it. But, um... Like, wait, what's Star Trek? <laughs> a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> uh, so in this game, it's a role-playing game, and it's, like, turn-based... Um, but it was like the only the first one that I've ever played that like the button presses like if you do it in like the rhythmic way you can get like more damage and stuff like that and that's kind of its jump out thing um, besides being like the first Mario RPG and the first game where you like actually team up with Bowser but in this game it's it's Bowser Mario Peach, and then they have, like, two original characters that they have in the game. Um, Gino, which is, like, a Pinocchio character, but he's, like, kind of, like, supposed to be, like, a loner or whatever. And then Mallow, and he's, like, a 100% puss puss. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And you pretty much have to go back and get all these, like, stars to, like, make so wishes can be granted again. Which is kind of the plot's a little, like, whatever. But, like, the cool thing about it is teaming up with Bowser to kick them out of like Bowser's keep because that's like the whole issue is like they take over his fucking place and they start producing these weapon mini bosses and you're like okay we have to get these guys out of out of uh, the Mushroom Kingdom so was it made by Square in Nintendo? Do I remember that? Am I misreading yeah. that? No why Why? what, what, what were you thinking? Because like back then Square was like the pinnacle of quality so it's just like a mm-hmm super polished like masterpiece it know. is the pinnacle of perfection <laughs> yeah. did you play the sequel on switch it came out like a year ago or so uh paper i mean mario? i played like paper mario on n64 and then i played like some of the other ones but n- well the ones in our the new ones in rpg it's just like uh, yeah they're they've all been rpgs oh, have they? yeah but like none of them have been like i don't know none of <laughs> Damn. None of them hit the same uh, way that that game yeah, did. Yeah. Um, but 
a lot of the same people kind of worked on Paper Mario and stuff, so it's not like I thought it was bad. It was just, it kind of went, like, from that, like, realistic to a degree looking visuals to, like, you know, a paper style, and I was mm-hmm. kind of like, eh, I don't really like this, so. But, cool. what do you recommend? I recommend the works of Randy Newman. <laughs> So we've been talking about Randy Newman. I recently brought this for up. Some on, I brought this on myself. Um, yeah, like when when I was growing up, like my dad, I inherited all my dad's Randy Newman CDs, and he would listen to it, and I'd be like, "What? A, this is trash! Like, why would anyone want to listen?" <laughs> I thought they were gonna say, "What a dick!" <laughs> I was like, "What?" And then like he became known as like the Toy Story guy, basically. Yeah, because he came out with "You Got a Friend with in Me," and that yeah. was like blew up like a motherfucker. Right. So I was like, Randy Newman's is the lamest person I've ever heard of. But then, as, like as I listened to it a little bit more, I felt like mm-hmm. he's just got some really weird and cool music, and like does some dark stuff sometimes, and like a lot of satirical stuff, like short people. Yeah, and he's a racist, so <laughs> no, um. he's a he satires racist. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, not. Not a taste for everyone. So how did this come about? Because... Because <laughs> you texted me and you're like trashing the lyrics to I Love LA. You're like, this makes no sense. It, it, no, it's just <laughs> he shits all over like New York and Chicago. And I'm like, eh, what? And then like, yeah. It was it was essentially the beginning of that song. Um because I was under the impression for some reason that, like, Huey Lewis wrote that song. For whatever reason, I thought they sang it. And, and it so, sounds like that And so style. I looked it up, and I was listening to it, and I was like, this is fucking Randy Newman, because it's such Randy Newman. And it was like, yeah, the lyrics are like... He's talking about how there's, like, people dressed in, like, dress up like monkeys. And then he says, like, everybody... It's, it's like, too cold, and it's too bitter in, like, New York and in Chicago. And then, like... He's like talking about how cool LA is. I'm like, dude, you're like the whitest fucker in the world. <laughs> but I, I think it was mainly because I've been to LA and I've been to New York and Chicago, mm-hmm. and I would much rather go to New York and Chicago than to LA. Um, the temperature is 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 better in California, obviously, because it's more like you know moderate. It is, but I was but there- like New York is like when you're there, you feel like shit's going on the whole time you're like dude fucking this place is alive yeah like builds your energy level right whereas like la it's like i spent nine straight months in la for yeah. work and people like, drive like fucking crazy yeah the traffic there, sucks too. but the temperature was like is beautiful every day but yeah. that gets so boring after a while i mean it also depends like, change it up dude i'd rather it be warm than cold though i like the variety i mean there's really not any variety in new york just kidding gotcha <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> blood starts coming out of my nose. <laughs> yeah, a couple classic albums, Little Criminals, Good Old Boys. Um, check so, them out if you want to hear some weird, slightly funny stuff. Slightly. <laughs> I'll let and you... That uh, Family Guy parody is spot on. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll let you uh, continue with your Randy Newman praise while I... Uh, That's it. I'm done. Oh, okay, you're done. Okay. Well, I won't say anything else. Then. Um, let's go ahead and move on to our weekly topic. Randy Newman's latest album. <laughs> we should do that. We should actually review like an album at some point. Sorry. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, man. Or would it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> he turned into a cowboy. Yeah! <laughs> the Halloween Kills soundtrack by John Carpenter. Okay. Coming November 24th. <laughs> Actually, I think it's October. <laughs> Small people. Brought to you by a bigot. <laughs> okay. So, last week I had a top 10 list, and uh, I thought that it was like it went over like fucking like 9 11, and it wasn't funny at all. But Matt, Did you see all the Matt, mi- Matt told me that it was, he thought it was funny. Yeah, along Even though all I the thought millions it, of comments we got by like the praise. Like, I thought it Buddy bombed. Boys Nation is behind it. I, th- I literally thought it bombed because while we did it, you were like, you put way too much thought into this. <laughs> and I was like, well, fuck, this is ruined. But I guess you liked it. So on request, you said I should just bring this back. And I guess I'll do it every time now as right. long as I can think of something. Uh, okay, so this week 
we have top 10 aquatic horror films. Okay. So number 10, Friday the 13th. Because there's, there's water. A lake. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Lake Placid at number 9. Mm. Number 8, Creepshow 1 for the segment Something to Tide You Over. <laughs> and Creepshow 2 for The Raft. The Raft. Classic. Number 7, The Abyss. Mm. Number 6, Sphere. I haven't seen that one. Number 5, The Host. Yeah. Number 4, Cold Skin. I'm a little partial to that one because I've seen that movie before. Matt hasn't. Uh, number 3, Jaws. Number two, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Honorable mention. Actually, not honorable mention. Dagon, because that movie sucks dick. <laughs> Number one, Waterworld. Dude. <laughs> the most horrifying water milk I'll movie. I'll stand behind Waterworld any day. Well, I mean, you like Randy Newman. So. <laughs> what about Titanic? Start over. You can go ahead and come up with the list next time. <laughs> Fucking... Uh, Letterman. I like it. That was a good list. You're a piss pig freak. <laughs> oh, yeah? Are you ready to talk about Cruel Jaws? So I noticed Cruel Jaws wasn't on your list. <laughs> Why not? Well, I didn't want to... <laughs> I didn't want to stack the dick. A deck. <laughs> Fucking, you know. It would have been too obvious. Yeah. Alright. I guess I've become the snide asshole in the podcast so, somehow. Haven't I? I'm like the guy that's more like cynical. You're turning into fucking, uh, what's his name from Tusk? I'm turning into fucking. <laughs> I'm a turning into Wally. fucking. How could I forget his name? Wally. I'm turning into Wally fucking West. So, Cruel Jaws, the Snyder Cut, William Snyder that is, <laughs> which was uh, Bruno Mattei's alternate, like, Alan Smithy name. <laughs> Even though I'm like, he didn't want to be, like, pinned down for the massive amounts of fucking, like, liable bullshit he did in this movie like so just just off the bat well, hang on r- oh, real quick so he a lot of the italian directors even like sergio leone yeah. would go by different names for like Amer- american releases because i guess americans wouldn't want to see something directed by a non-american person but i was watching some movie and i forget the director but his he went by the name john old jr <laughs> because his dad was also a director who went by john old so I was like, if you're John Old Jr., doesn't that make you John Young? Compared to John Old, yes. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. <laughs> that cracked me up. I don't know if I believe that, like, I don't know, like, to me, like, I'll, like Stephen King wrote under, like, a lot of pseudonyms until he thought his shit was good enough, so. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, anyway, now that the podcast has been completely derailed. Um, <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> Step it up, Matt. Uh, <laughs> you have to know yeah, that, that is the stupidest shit. Step it up, like that, like when, like someone, like a boss or somebody's like, step it up. Well, I was gonna say you're gonna have to put that on my performance. Review it's so the- fucking stupid because it's like people say that that don't know how to make something better. Like, hey, step, step it, up. it up. It's like, okay, and what? How? <laughs> well, I don't have any way to fucking step it up. Just step it up. A step a fucking. Shotgun up your ass and pull the trigger. Um, we always so, joke at work like the Simpsons joke where yeah. Homer's the boss and he's like, Are you guys working hard? They're like, Yeah. It's like, Can you work any harder? They're like, Yeah, okay. And like, yeah. It's like, Okay, job well done. So, some of the footage that was used in this film Jaws, Jaws 2, The Last Shark, Jaws 3D, and Deep Blood. <laughs> so, those are just, and that's not counting. I'm sure there's a bunch of other shit, but. Um, that's why this movie, I don't know if it was ever even released. No, it was actually released straight to video. But it hasn't been available for a long time because of, like, copyright yeah. issues. <laughs> yeah, Cruel Jaws, also known as The Beast, is a 1995 direct-to-video Italian horror film shot in Florida, including the Theater of the Sea, which was, like, their, like where the, the extra stuff that was filmed that was, like, with the dolphins and, and a seal or whatever. Um, and Hulk Hogan owns it. Um, the film stars Richard Dew, Hulk Hogan, and David Luther, and was directed by Bruno Mattei under the name of William Snyder. It was released on VHS and DVD in relative obscurity, mostly outside of the United States. While marketed in many areas as Jaws 5, Cruel Jaws, <laughs> it actually doesn't have any connections to the Jaws franchise besides like the shit it stole. 
So, so hilarious. Here's the uh, synopsis for this film. With the annual regatta celebration just around the corner, an aggressive 25-foot tiger shark swims into the waters of the sleepy seaside town of Hampton Bay. In the meantime, against the backdrop of a shady real estate deal, the defenseless owner of the local amusement park, Dags Snarenson, finds himself with his back to the wall as an unscrupulous land developer and his ruthless mobsters use strong-arm tactics to convince him to give up his property. Of course, the greedy mayor refuses to close the beaches, and before long, the first corpses start washing up on shore. But now that the ferocious aquatic predator has tasted human flesh, it will stop at nothing to get its next meal. Who can rid the ocean of this beast? <laughs> That's a pretty good summary. Yeah. It's like the best one yet. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody actually gave it. The one that, like, is literally just a fucking, like, straight-to-video fucking movie is has the best thing. So what did you think of Cruel Jaws? <laughs> it was fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I was like... This is one of those movies that is so bad it's good, I would say. Yeah, I mean... Like, it's outrageously bad in almost every way. It's... Yeah, I... It's like the room. Like, it transcends badness to pe- become amazing. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't think I would put it on the same, like, pedestal as, like, Troll 2 or, like, The Room or, mm-hmm. like, Bird Demic 1 or 2. Because those are just... The people are so out of control, they don't know how to make a good movie. Thus making it, like, you know... But the dialogue was on par with, like, something written by, like, an alien. Yeah. It's like... Or, like, a ro- like a robot or something. It's just... A lot of it... There's also a lot of jump cuts that don't make sense in this film. Yeah. Um, but I guess that's what happens when you're literally just Frankensteining a movie together. The dialogue, like... Like, it's American actors mm-hmm. speaking English, but they sound like nothing a human has ever... Yeah, like. it's a lot of, like... <laughs> English that like people wouldn't really say like <laughs> I think I think it was you know written by someone who English was not their first language and they were like <laughs> yeah you like, have to stick yeah. to the script like word verbatim yeah or you're fired Bruno Mattei and his fucking like gang of dumbasses I made a short clip can I play it to like you're gonna get us fucking banned prove how nuts the dialogue is fucking prove it I must prove it cause like you have to hear it to believe it yeah go for it alright here we go hi Dag hi oh, Francis what can I do for you I'm sorry this isn't a social call I have an order to fix from Samuel Lewis he's gotta be out of here in 30 days good energy I remember this part yeah, we've well, always been a good friend, sure. Besides, 30 days is a long time. A lot of things can happen. Sure, all we have to do is give him an advance for rent for the next 15 years. That fat money grubbing bastard. I think he broke his balls off. <laughs> what? Don't listen to him. He's young. He's hot headed. That's all. Hey, Billy. Then another conversation just starts happening, yeah. right? Dude, this main guy. Yeah, there's a lot of that in this film. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of that in this movie where like stuff will happen and like then something else will start happening. Um. So <laughs> I have to deal with that. I'm going to go ahead and start off and talk about how, like, um, in the beginning uh, of this film, they have this random group of people fucking going after treasure or something, and they just get, like, the shark uh, buries the dudes and then fucking just rips everybody apart and then, like kills the dude on the boat too yeah i did think that was scary when like the huge shark head appears and he's like like i think that was taken from another movie but they got one person in the theater yeah um 
Yeah, so these guys were like uh, <laughs> weird mob guys or something. They got like, green in the beginning of the film. Um, there was a lot of like obviously like stuff that wasn't part of the original movie that was like pickup shots. It was like that Night of the Living Dead DVD you had. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like a the the boat captain was like fucking John's like drunken fucker or whatever. Like he just was drinking the whole time. He's like. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I have a note that says, What the fuck is going on? The shark is bearing divers in an underwater cave, bouncing his head against rocks. What the fuck is this? He's like, ah. Yeah. And then the guy's like, Bosco! Jose! And I was like, <laughs> hey. So the next scene is people are driving around in Dale's RV from The Walking Dead, and that was actually our main characters. Or, uh, what's his name? Uh, he has his glasses <laughs> or whatever, know. and, uh, fucking his uh, girlfriend that ends up like cheating on him and then she gets eaten and she tells him to jump off a roof and go fuck <laughs> himself but uh yeah <laughs> you finally came back you're more beautiful than ever I'm like that's what the child says to fucking uh, the main character's like girlfriend and I'm like this is like another example of like the kind of dialogue that like no child would ever say like so- what the fuck are you talking about? That child, like... Sh- that she, child. Uh, she's always, like, has a real fake smile throughout the movie and, like, the deadest eyes. Dude, her teeth I've... are fucking horrifying. <laughs> They're like, so fucked up. Well, it's like the stage where you have, like, half baby teeth and half, like, yeah. adult teeth. Yeah. But, like, she's being harsh. forced to, like, act in this movie and it's like she has a... Like, she's being her. forced to act! That's what it seems like! Because, like, her eyes are could not be more dead. That's everybody in this movie is that bad. <laughs> I don't know what the fucking movie you were watching. Can we talk about the main dude? Which dude? The, the dude with, like, the mushroom cut. Like the Billy from Power Rangers guy? <laughs> yeah. It's, like, some of the worst acting I've ever seen. But he did kind of remind me of, like, myself. Just because I used to have that same, like, horrible haircut. It's like the mushroom cut, like, parted down the middle. Oh. Like, 90s style. John used to have that same haircut, Yeah, yeah. But, like, he's basically just, like, a dork with glasses and a bad haircut. (laughs) I was like... Except for he's kind of, like, ripped in this movie. So you're like, okay, what? Um, Man, his acting is outrageous. (laughs) Yeah, that's like... There's only one shark that could do this. Tiger! So it's like every... What? Everybody in this movie is just like that. It's like... They're given lines to say and and marks to hit, but it's they're not given direction like how to say it. So it's like mm-hmm. goes all over the place. So we've got our first appearance by the man himself, Hulk Hogan, and uh, when he finally sure when he finally talks, he doesn't sound anything like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> He's like the dude in that conversation Matt played earlier that sounds like the dude that is the most like chill. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, you know, it's just how it is. But, um, some of the facts about this guy, because there's so little information on this guy on IMDb, um, because he literally did this movie, and then he did uh, Shadow Warriors 1 and 2 as uh, stand-in work for Hulk Hogan. And that was the, that's how I found about those movies that I sent you. It was like, But he met Hulk Hogan in 94 in Orlando. Uh, when he went to WCW and was supposed to double for like him and Trump, like Thunder and Paradise, but since the show got canceled, he did it for like those two movies. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he also, looks a lot like him. yeah, he did celebrity lookalike work uh, as Hulk Hogan impersonations, mm-hmm. which kind of begs the question why they didn't have him do a Hulk Hogan impersonation here because. To see him, like his head is really the only <laughs> thing that looks like him yeah. because his body is like. Not he's not working out. He's not, but he's not like out. fat, but he's just kind of like he has no real muscles. So yeah. it's like if you if Hulk Hogan stopped working out and doing broids and like didn't talk like Hulk Hogan, it would be like okay. But yeah, that that kind of threw me off. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's one of the amazing parts of this movie. Yeah, it's like one of the main characters just looks exactly <laughs> like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> This movie was like came out in 1995, but it seems like an 80s movie. Like, yeah, I, was like, I can't believe this came out in 1995. Like, I think that's like kind of the the Italian thing is it's like things seem like behind by mm-hmm. 10 years or something. But like, 
and they like see the girl and that she's in the wheelchair and they look horrified and I'm like dude just shoot her like a fucking person <laughs> they like see her and they're like oh god and I'm like okay. and you'd think there'd be no way someone confined to a wheelchair would be threatened by a shark and you'd be wrong <laughs> <laughs> um in a split second I lost everything my wife and Susie's smile I was like this dialogue is pure shit <laughs> Like, that was what Hulk Hogan said, because yeah. the little girl is his daughter. Um, Hi, dog. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the dudes in that scene that you played looked like Prison Mike from The Office. He had, like, a purple fucking bandana on his head, and <laughs> yeah. I was like, what is this shit? Um, yeah, Hulk Hogan's name is Dag. And I was like, huh? Which I was confused, because I... I kept thinking the dude was calling him dad all the time, and I was, and then I realized, wait, it's Dag. Yeah, well, I was like, Dag? Who the fuck's name is Dag? Except for, like, there was that one dude in that comic strip that fucking his name was, like, Dagwood. And <clears> yeah, and that's like, what made me want a Dagwood sandwich from Penn Station. And throw it in the trash. Delicious. Uh, <laughs> I just throw it in the toilet and save myself four hours. <laughs> um, I should have a fighting chance this year. I've been training all winter. These people can act more. <laughs> I was like, these people act like shit. <laughs> Dag is like a mini Hogan because he's smaller than an- than other guys. Like, it's, the police officer is like that much taller than him. I'm like, this just doesn't look right. I was like, huh? <laughs> I was like... Oh, right, so- <laughs> Go ahead. I was going to say, like, I that note that I had is what you played earlier where the guy's just talking about how he's gonna rip a guy's fucking balls off and I was just like dude chill out there's a fucking that's a threat right in front of a cop this was the very first time someone's balls yeah, were there's, threatened there's, there, an obsession there's at least like talk. three or four I have all of them written down so, so crazy so like we're we're laughing it up right about this movie but like do you, do you like this movie? Like I'm, what I'm struggling with is we're laughing at the movie, right? Yeah. We're not laughing with it. And like normally, well, I don't think this movie was like meant to make anyone laugh, right? Like when they made it, they didn't no, mean clear. for anybody to laugh at this movie. <clears throat> so is that wrong of us to laugh at their like horrible failures? Who gives a fuck? I'm just I'm trying to figure out why I enjoy this kind of movie so much because like because it's like. Like a bunch of those other movies that like were never meant to be funny, like Troll Two and fucking Children like, of the Living Dead. <laughs> for some reason, they thought those were going to be like super serious, and but like all the all it, it's like the script, the dialogue, and the bad acting are like that's that's it. That's the whole reason because everything else about this movie was pretty much fine. Like the locations were real real locations. Yeah. It's not like it was like ridiculous like effects they put in the film. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it was just all the people, like, acting so out of control, you were like, what? But that's just, uh, that's pretty much it for me. That's why, I mean, I honestly don't know if I would ever watch this film again. Oh, um, I would love to watch it again with, like, maybe, maybe some more people. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess if I was, like, high on heroin or something. Um, so... A couple runs by this guy on the beach, and they just get a little sand on him, and the guy flips his shit and says, Why don't you bust someone else's balls? <laughs> I'm like, dude, they didn't even, like, probably mean to do that. What's your fucking problem? It's like, this movie reminds me of something that, like, we made when we were, like, a kid. We're like, like, the first rule in, um, what is it, um, improv is to, like, go with the person and, like, agree with what they do and build mm-hmm. on it. And it's like... When you first start improving, you think it's to like take the scene and make it your own and do whatever you want with it, but that's how you like ruin it. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, if somebody wrote this, then there shouldn't be any improv, uh, at least to this degree. But it seems like everything was improv, but it wasn't. Like I know it wasn't. So it's like, I'm sorry. it's like nobody would. Act. I mean, maybe somebody would act like that, but it was just so like it's like there's a lot of turn on a dime shit in this film. Like, instantly. It's yeah. like... Eh. Uh, one of my favorite f- uh, parts in this film comes up when a bo- body washes up on the uh, beach. It's like one of the divers. Mm-hmm. And... Um, <laughs> no, this, it's a great scene. <laughs> so, like, the cop 
thinks that like the horribly decomposed body that has a huge bite taken out of it was uh, the work of a boat propeller. And uh, they don't have a forensics guy, I guess, or something, or they don't have somebody that that's maybe like an oceanologist. And uh, <laughs> I was like, this guy better not have access to any of that shit because he's a fucking idiot because there's a huge bite out of his stomach. So he asked his friend, like this is a scientist guy, and he says, like, in my opinion, like, a speedboat propeller didn't do this. It was a shark. And the cop says, a shark? Like, a surprise? Like, you are fucking, you're a cop on an oceanside, like, town. Like, what the fuck do you think? Is, you know, like, like they act like that never happens. And he's like, I don't know what to say. Speedboats don't shoot people up. Sharks, too. Uh, I would maybe understand if this person, like, didn't know what a shark was or a speedboat was. But, like, the way... That he uses both those words, it seems like the cop doesn't understand what a speedboat or a shark is, because yeah, yeah. he's like, he's like, a shark! And I'm like... But also, it's hilarious, because, like, Billy's just a guy that showed up, basically. At yeah, he, it, was, it was the cop's, like, old friend yeah, and stuff so, like that. So he's, like, doing him a favor to, like, try to look, yeah. use his opinion, and the, yeah. the cop's like... I need answers immediately. Yeah. I was like, why? Yeah, like, essentially... That's your job, not his. His friend, like, the cop, like, ruins this guy's relationship. Yeah. Because this guy also, later on in the movie, decides to, like, instead of, like, spending time with his girlfriend and, you know, all that stuff, he, like, helps him out with his case. And it's yeah. like... Well, his girlfriend was what? right at the be very beginning because she's like, there's something fishy about this. Like, you're going to be spending time working on fish stuff. Yeah. As opposed to hanging out with me. She's like, she was right. The time the police couldn't themselves, like, didn't have an oceanologist working with them, which I thought was weird. It's like, okay. Um, and then the, the next one is also, it's kind of a two-parter here. It's a one-two punch of bullshit. Uh, the cop and the scientist have seen the body before. They unzip it, and they all three say, oh, Jesus. <laughs> the mortician hasn't seen it, but he's seen bodies before, so... Maybe it's a normal thing for him, but even so, he hasn't seen the body before. Um, but they've seen it, like, fucking five minutes ago, and then when they first saw it, they didn't react anything like that. <laughs> they unzip it, and they're like, oh, fuck! And they're, like, faces, they're like, the whole time, everybody's, like, when they're not talking, it's like... Like, they're Maybe. acting it up, like... Maybe they filmed that scene first and then forgot, like... <laughs> That's what I thought, like, happened, is, like, they filmed that scene first, and then they went out and filmed it with, like like later yeah. on the beach but like yeah because it was like what the fuck like so good uh abrupt cuts in this film uh they're like talking to the mortician he says a shark did this and then it completely cuts to them talking to someone completely different and they're not even like talking like they're just they're in the same poses but it's like it's like they pulled out the mortician and put somebody else there and instead of being at the morgue they're like at a yacht club and i'm like what the fuck is going on like that's like i had to rewind it like five times i was like is there a scene missing like what the fuck is going on here like yeah there was a scene missing but they just didn't they, they explained it in the scene but to the amount of like explanation that like is the bare minimum it's like yeah i didn't i was like what can i even have a note it seems like there's a fucking missing scene in this film or something because they're talking to it like i guess people like, like, or in, like these people were in charge that they were talking to, and it turned out to be uh, this one guy that's like in league with the mob and like the mayor of the town or something. But all they would have had to do is been like, "Oh, hey, mayor," blah blah blah. But yeah, you know. <laughs> so this movie is a total Jaws ripoff. Um, but the funny thing is, like, you don't say. <laughs> but the funny thing is, in the Jaws novel, like, there actually was a mafia subplot. <laughs> That uh, they didn't use in the movie, probably for good reasons. But it's like not only did you rip off the movie, but they. Threw do you in... think? Do you think that like whoever wrote this like actually went through the Jaws book or was had prior knowledge of that? Or do you think it was just some random bullshit that they came? It with could them? be either way, but I mean, it's just a funny way, coincidence. It's, yeah, it's the most. You know, there are tons of Jaws ripoffs, but this is pretty blatant. <laughs> yeah, it's the only ripoff that rips off the book. Yeah. And um, it's cruel. 
And I was thinking, like, is the shark really cruel in yeah. this movie? <laughs> Very much so. Because he he's, remember, he's trained by the... the he's like a military-trained yeah, super and, shark. Yeah, and he's also, like, there is parts where he, like... Like, he tries to bury those people, and then when they come out, then... And, and he's, like, when people are in that regatta, he's not hunting for, like, food. He's hunting for fun. Mm. So, because, like, if he was hunting for food, he would have just stopped at the one person that fell in, but he's, mm-hmm. he starts, like, narking people left and right, and it's like, uh Um. <laughs> so good. <laughs> also, like, there's a lot of, like, facts in this movie that I think are disproven <laughs> these days about sharks, about how, like... All they are is, like, making sharks, like, baby sharks, like, eating and, like, killing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, eh. And then again, sharks, I think, were, like, kind of unknown back then. Like, we know a little bit more about them. Yeah. But, um... It was the 90s. <laughs> so this is another great fucking line in that same scene. You know how many people drowned? You gonna blame those on sharks, too? And the scientist says, yeah, maybe. <laughs> what the fuck? That makes no sense. That's, like... I was like, okay, so they have the evidence, and there's a fucking shark bite out of the side of a person's body. But instead of bringing that up, he responds with, I'm going to blame someone who's drowning on a shark somehow. Like, sharks grab people and are like, get down the fucking deep. It's like, it's like this guy, it's like if Neil deGrasse Tyson was like, no, uh yeah. It's like, this guy's supposed to be super intelligent, and he makes himself look like an idiot in five <laughs> seconds. Maybe I will fucking blame sharks on drownings. It's like, eh. Amazing. Uh, also, you can tell this is like, I don't know, this, this like you said, this film seems like it was made like in the 80s because like there's a part where like some dudes whistle at a girl and she like smiles and then she, yeah. like they say some not nice things about her um, and she, she, they're like, she's a super babe. And then they talk about her like upper parts and I was like, but there is some worse things said later on. There's, like, some dude talks about how he's like, what the fuck is going on? This guy says, I'm in charge of pussy to these women. Mm-hmm. And one of his friends starts laughing like he turns into, like, the Joker. He's like, ah! <laughs> it like It's like a fucking, like, zoom in on him. And then they call him a dick we or dickhead over and over again. A dick brain. Yeah, dick brain. And I'm like... And they're chanting it, and I was like... Okay, these are adults. Yeah, these are like they're, they're, they're acting kids. Like yeah, eight year olds. Yeah, it's like so. But weird. also, like they, he like says some pretty fucked up shit. He's <laughs> like, I'm a fucking, I, I'm, I don't know. I, I, he's like, I'm the inspector of vagina. I have to check it, and I was like, okay, yeah. Like it, we're probably what like 15 minutes into the movie at this point, and I'm like, dude, this movie is a classic. You have like 10 <laughs> pages of notes here. <laughs> I figured you were gonna like. I just couldn't run out of paper when I yeah when I get to like when these mo- when we watch these kinds of movies I just it's like every five seconds I have to stop the fucking film and write something because I just can't believe what the fuck is happening. Yeah, like each line is more mind blowing than the last. And it's not like I'm pissed. It's just like I'm so like what the fuck. Like I would rather watch something like this than something that's just boring. But it and I'm not mad. I'm just kind of like what the fuck <laughs> is like who the yeah. fuck wrote it's crazy. this. Um, so this is the second time that someone in anger said they were going to tear someone another person's balls off in the film. Uh, it's like a thing that happens a lot in this movie. They should have called this movie not Cruel Jaws, but Cruel Balls. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> um, so people are making out on the beach, actually. It's just a couple, but the one dude is, like, super bronzed. And I'm like, I bet that person got skin cancer, like, hardcore. Like the Viking dude? Yeah. The Nordic? Because man. he's, like... It's ridiculous. The girl's like, I want to go for a swim first before we have sex on the beach. And I'm like, dude, that is a fucking mess. Like, you're going to get sand all over the place. <laughs> How old am I to fucking say that? Fucking sex on the beach, fuck that shit, you're sand everywhere. I mean, it's true, Sound though. Like Anakin Skywalker. Sa- wow, well, fucking shit. He had two beautiful boy and girls. <laughs> uh... Totally legit cut of guy putting one toe in and then it cuts to a close up of his face. It's freezing! I'm like, this is sad shit. Like, this guy was probably like jerking dudes off in fucking an alley for five Jesus. five dollars a pop before they fucking pulled him off the street. Good lord, man. Half, well, most of the people in this movie, like, what the fuck? They had no profession before this, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was like a non union. This guy had no brain. 
dick brain. No, literally, like this Viking guy was just like an idiot. He was a idiot. Oh man, it's Cruel Jaws in the hunt for his next victim. Cruel, cruel ass Jaws strikes again. So Dag is back on the scene to take care of his daughter in a wheelchair, brother. Uh, so we got a, the, our first day for night shot. Just took the footage and made it blue. There's a lot of that. Totally night now. Cool. Shot on shittio. What is this? Yeah. So uh, we got dudes pulling up. Gloria's brother freaking smacked her and told her to go home. Um, There's a lot of hitting in this movie. Yeah. Too. They're putting the boots to uh, Gloria's, like, boyfriend which okay so there's like a uh uh what's it a uh, romeo and juliet subplot with uh gloria and like one of dag's sons and dag and gloria's dad the guy in league with the mafia which you don't really find out till like the last five seconds of the movie. <laughs> um they're um they're at odds they're like sworn enemies even though yeah but um they're putting the boots to him, and the sound effects are like stock. They're like, poo, 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 poo. and I'm like, <laughs> they're giving him like the Goodfellas stomp. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like doing no damage. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, so like they like <laughs> they're breaking into like this place in the dead of night. They're going into like Dag Hogan's aquarium to feed poisonous fish to his fucking dolphins and and like the. Uh, Whatever it's called, the fucking uh, the otter or whatever. Yeah, or whatever. and I was like, dude, this is fucking fucked up. But like, they stop it before it happens. Thank God, because it's like, I don't need this shit in this movie. I don't need fucking them to like kill a fucking animal, even if it's fake. Like, yeah, speaking of cruelty, I is it, seriously, dude, these guys are fucked up. Because the fucking <laughs> like Hogan picks it up and he's like. Someone's trying to poison the dolphins, dude. <laughs> and I was just like, okay. Like, how the fuck did you know instantly? Because they said they put, like... Strychnine. Which is, like... Isn't that, like... It's like poison. Well, you can't smell it, I, I think. Don't, I don't know. <laughs> so, like... I was, he's like... Strychnine. Yo! <laughs> um, guy whose girlfriend gets killed by cruel jaws is uh, in the police station... Like, this is the the guy I was talking about before that has no brain, the fucking Viking. And there's, like, the there's another uh, police officer there, and he's like, this fucking idiot says that a shark killed his girlfriend. <sighs> and uh, normally the police officer would laugh with him, but then since there was that bite victim, he's like, wait a minute. We already had a fucking shark attack, possibly. And I'm like, of course! it's a f- You're next to a fucking, like, ocean like that's what pissed me off i was like dude these people don't solve any crimes i bet i was like what the hell the police officer comes out he comes out of the the thing that says police but it's literally just the door on the side of a house it's like okay this is not a police station so that part was amazing because he t- <laughs> he doesn't just like walk out the door and go yeah. to his car he leaps the railing. And there's like this super funky music that plays. That okay, they so play I, at the beginning of the movie too. I'm going to play a clip because it's amazing. This is the music that plays on the totally unnecessary scene where we see the guy walk to his car. Basically. It's So it's this and then there's at the very beginning of the movie they play this in the credits. But it's never played again. It's just random as fuck. So 90s. It's like somebody fucked a keyboard. It was so bad. <laughs> the Milli Vanilli yeah. sound effect. <laughs> oh my god. Also, there's a lot of um, blatant copyright infringement with the music in this. Uh, but, yeah. But they cut it off just before it gets straight up copyrighted. But so, we'll, we'll get into that here in a minute. Um, that was the most outrageous. Yeah. Um. You're a son of a bitch, saying brother do Jack. That's what uh, Hogan says that to the one dude that comes to like serve him the papers. And he's like, you're a real son of a bitch, dude. And I'm like, uh, actually it would have been cool if he said it like that. But he was like, you're a real son of a bitch. And I was just like, okay. Uh, this music is, t- is completely inappropriate because they're talking serious business. And it's like clown music. But having said that, out of nowhere Hulk Hogan says, 
I'll beat the shit out of anyone that tries to poison my dolphins. <laughs> and the guy says in the least convincing voice ever, I don't know what you're talking about. And then the seal pushes him in the water. And the his he's like, he really was full of hot air. And I'm like, what? What does that have to do with anything? Um, also, this dude's walking all over the place, like, throughout the entire movie with an unless cigar in his mouth. I don't trust him. Yeah. Um, and then we get our first actual night shot in mm-hmm. the film. Uh, I couldn't believe it. So we got double alert, ADR. Looks like she said what? So this is the scene um, when uh, the whole movie starts to unravel for uh, the relationship of um, Billy and Vanessa. Um, they're about to have sex, presumably. Um, and uh, the police officer comes to their boathouse, or wherever they are, and um, <laughs> it looks like she says what, but what comes out is she's early. <laughs> so she's like, and it's like, she's early. I think that's really the only time that I remember seeing, like, it was so blatant. Yeah. I noticed I noticed that quite a bit. And I was like, eh... But um, Billy was about to have sex with his girlfriend or wife, Vanessa, and he'd rather chase a shark. Uh, Billy, I want you to find the tallest skyscraper you can and throw yourself off of it, and then go fuck yourself. <laughs> Not possible, especially in that order. Only in that order, actually. You could go fuck yourself and then throw yourself uh, off of a skyscraper. But um, Pretty amazing oh, dialogue right there. Yeah. Hulk Hogan talking to his daughter, and she says, Daddy, um, if a shark tries to fucking eat me, I'll punch it in the nose. And he said, there's no way that a shark would want to eat you. And uh, she said, Daisy and the other dolphin would rip it apart, you know, attack it. And I said, well, fucking foreshadowing. Um, that specifically doesn't happen, though. I thought, I thought what would happen is they would somehow, like, come to the rescue and, like, you know, run off like the cruel jaws, but she that doesn't happen. But she does get attacked. It, it like instantly like she falls in and it's like going after all these other people and she falls in and it's like, oh fucking little girl in a wheelchair. Uh also she instantly falls asleep as Hulk Hogan starts reading the book, Jack. Start reading the book one, two, three, puts them down, dude. He's like Jack and the beans talk and she's like yeah. And I'm like, okay, this is fucking the shits. So it's like, oh my god. You mean that's not how you fall asleep every night? It's like, I wish! Instantly? I wish I could fall asleep that quick. <laughs> um, everybody's here. They're going to die when you see... Oh, yeah. The, okay, so this is uh, Vanessa and like this other girl. Or, like They find they go out and like Vanessa's like, Fuck Billy, I'm going to like get with somebody else and fuck, him, fuck that person tonight, essentially. And... Uh, her friend's like, oh, everybody, everybody's here, and they're going to die when they see you dressed like that. And then she says, look who's talking. I'm like, eh? <laughs> what are you talking about? It's like, fucking people are almost already paired up. So I was like, eh? And then, like, she's like, I want to dance. And then uh, Billy from Stargate looking for his girlfriend. What did you think of that party? I mean, it looked pretty slamming to me. Bunch of lamos. <laughs> It did have a live band, though. <laughs> that takes like, a like, notch down in my book. <laughs> live bands are almost always horrible. I'm like, if it's not the Beatles, fuck off! I'm like, get them back together, and then we'll talk. Um, yeah, it was, uh, I don't know. It was that, It was just kind of like, just a bunch of people stock dancing. I was just like... Uh, so the, there's a part where the shark almost kills the fucking asshole in this movie, but he doesn't, and that was kind of disappointing. Mm. Um, but he does get his later in the film. Uh, Sheriff's name is Burger, apparently. His last name, I didn't know that until he, they said it. And I, I went, what the fuck? It's like when, when they said Dag, it was like, <laughs> come again? Um, they're putting the nets up, and the steel ones they're like putting down are like flopping all over the place, and I'm like, I don't trust this shit. It was like, pow, like, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> I trusted the mayor because he's like, 
Absolutely nothing will happen. Yeah, there's actually a note I have later where he says, it cost us a certain amount of money. How, you know, like, there's no way it could go wrong. And I'm like, that doesn't equate to safety. Uh, I have a note that says, it's 30, 38 minutes into this film, and I'm starting to lose interest. Um, dog, yeah, I, my interest never wavered. Like, I got on my crazy. phone around this time because it was getting kind of boring. Because there was no actual, all they were doing was talking, and there was no actual, like, it wasn't, like, good dialogue or funny dialogue. It was just kind of, like, shit with, like, regular people. Uh, dog going to the water. I thought that dog was going to get killed, but it didn't. Um, so this, <laughs> so this part, this family comes up to the, the sheriff. That's this is like, the best scene in the movie. <laughs> this is so, okay, so, like, the uh, sheriff is doing, like, a lifeguard duty, which I'm like, okay. I guess he's, he's they're copying off the part where, like, the one dude fucking in Jaws is, like, looking out to the horizon and shit. Um, so this family comes up, uh, like, it's their family vacation, and the dad asks the police officer uh, that's watching the horizon if this is the beach where those people were killed by the shark. And he says, it is, but it's not here anymore. Must have missed that fucking scene. Um, it left, and the family is super disappointed. So first of all, take that in, that this family wanted to go <laughs> see a shark that had killed a bunch of people. They wanted to go see a beach, and like they wanted and to see people get killed. This was their vacation. <laughs> and so the kid says, but I thought we were going to see the shark. And the dad says, shut up. And he, like, hits him, but it's the, like, lightest. This must have not, I don't think this was this guy's, like, kid, because the way he hit him was, like, I don't want to get in trouble. It was, like, like that. And the idea that the family just came on a vacation to, a, to see a shark that murdered the shit out of people was, like, so ridiculous. I was, like, and this was, like, an ongoing thing, because after this, he, like, once they, like, see the fucking, sh like, find the shark, the family, like, the dad's, like, follow that policeman, because, like, he is, like, oh, shit, the shark's back, and he leaves, and they follow him. But just having the dad hit yeah. the kid, like, for no reason, like, it was, it was so out of nowhere and, like, unnecessary, and it doesn't even make sense, because the kid was, like, I want to see the shark. It's, like, that was, weren't they all united? In yeah. That? And he's, like, shut up! That was the least ridiculous part of this whole scene. <laughs> to me, as soon as they were talking about, like, wanting to see a fucking shark that had killed people as their vacation, I was like... Amazing. Also, I was like, whose wife was that? Because that must have been, like, one of the people's wives or, like, some lady that, like, was related to, like, one of the Italian people because she didn't say a damn thing. Like, okay, we'll just put her in there because this probably doesn't cost us any money. Um, I think one of the things you uh, that you may have lost interest in was when Billy was like going off on more scientific like mumbo jumbo, and he's like, "There's only two ways to handle the shark: kill them or starve them." No, I actually wrote that <laughs> down because that was that's later on. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, no, no. I'm. Ta I think it was mainly it was just boring. Because um, if it wasn't anything to do with like the main characters, it was generally boring. Um, I got it. Okay, so the guys in the helicopter call the shark a son of a bitch, which I thought was funny. <laughs> Is it there's a son of a bitch right now? <laughs> Good God, why? Um, I got them in the. So they say, we killed him. We shot him in the head. We can go back to base. Then they can retrieve him. Like, how the fuck do you know you shot him in the head? Uh, then the family follows the police officer to go see the shark. Holy shit, it's dead. So the scientists say that the shark they killed isn't the same shark. Um, that killed all those people because of the jaw span, which makes total sense. But the landlord guy, like with the mafia, says you've been watching too many movies. Like, what the fuck does that even mean? Like, all you have to do is open it up and see what's in the stomach, is what he said. And he's like, "Don't talk rubbish, boy. This isn't the place or time." Like, who the fuck wrote this? This is like kids fucking around with their own movie shit. It just doesn't make any sense. It's like. Somebody will say one thing, and then someone that's, like, their protagonist, like, their, like, enemy in the movie will go against it, even if it makes no fucking sense. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, okay. Um, tell that shar shark... <laughs> <Paracocators>. <laughs> 
Yeah, tell the shark, or like, tow the shark back out, because if not, it's going to sink up the whole bay. I was like, possible? Uh, the cheerleaders were like spelling out the longest word in fucking history. Really? I was like, like, give me a A, give me a B, give me a C, give me a D. I was like, fucking in this. Random kid comes up and guy kisses him and slaps him on the ass. That was the, uh, what's his face? The mob guy. I guess he was like running for some office and some random kid comes up and he's like, I guess, kissing babies and stuff. Mm-hmm. And some kid comes up and he's like, kisses him on the cheek. And like, as he runs away, he like slaps him on the butt, like, oh, you know. And I was like, okay, this is a different time, I guess. <laughs> so I was like, um,. I'm afraid Francis, the mother, is actually so strange, almost as if someone has trained him to attack and kill. They called Cruel Jaws a motherfucker. <laughs> they hate that shark. Third time in this movie, someone has said they are going to rip someone's balls off. This time, they are going to make the use of them as earrings. <laughs> yeah. I'll shove head. <laughs> Why? Yeah. <laughs> I'll shove your head underwater and drown you. Yeah, that would do it. Uh, there isn't a shark in the world that can get through these nets. I believe it. They cost $30,000. $30, I'm like, so what does that have to do with anything? Uh, also, the mayor looks a bit like an old Jimmy Hart. Uh, cue the off-brand Jaws theme. Actually, it's pretty much the Jaws theme, but then it cuts off. Uh, the guy's okay. So the guy's counting down for the regatta start, and he counts down two minutes ago, thirty seconds ago, then randomly thirteen seconds. <laughs> like what the fuck? Why would you say thirteen seconds? Or is he like counting off every second, and they're just showing <laughs> the specific times? He says thirteen seconds. It shows everyone's face, like a main, like main characters in this movie, like you know, like oh, getting ready, and it, it takes it's like takes way more than three seconds. Because then the next thing he says is 10 seconds. And I'm like, okay, that was 13 seconds itself. Um, I was like, uh, let's see. So it's not clear like on who was re- winning the race between the two. Because at one point, some like the main guy, like the bad guy was like, oh shit, I'm going to lose to this guy. And then the next second, the person is being cheered off. So like, he's like, fuck, what am I going to do? Because the guy was, like, beating him. And then the next second, his, like, the bad guy's friends were like, yeah, you're beating him. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I was like, this is... Literally, the editor was just like... Yeah, as with everything else in this movie. Christ. It's not, all over the place. It was, like, totally incoherent. Yeah. <laughs> you're just... The guy started taunting him. You're disgusting. You're a piece of shit. You're vomit. You're nobody. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Gloria, give me those binoculars. Okay, so this is Hogan. Sees the f- he, he's like, Gloria, give me those binoculars. And he sees the flotation device that is like tied to the shark. And he like goes into overdrive and he's like, oh my god! <laughs> he fucking like runs off. And I was like, this is the one time when he like seems to give a fuck mm-hmm. in this movie. Because every other time he's like, he goes up here and the rest of the movie he's like, just like, He's like, I'm going to be as chill as possible. Yeah, he's like, I just ate 50 pounds of weed brownies. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, once Cruel Jaw shows up, people just start jumping into the water. Like, no one's falling into the water. They're all like, ah! Yeah, people start panicking, and, like, I noticed there was a, like, there's a shot of people, like, running away. Yeah. And there was a dude who was running with his arms straight yeah. up. He's like, ah! <laughs> yeah. Like, would anyone do that in real life? <laughs> he, like, turned it to an orangutan. Like, yeah. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. Well, the, fu- the funniest part about that is, like, so these guys were so bad that they were that far back and they were that close to the beach that they could just run on the beach because the people that were really good had to be saved by Dag's boat. But, like, yeah. the thing that really got me was they say, get out of the water quick, and then someone else says, stay calm. <laughs> I'm like, which is it? You can't do both. Everyone starts speed fucking walking like, right and proper. Um, people start running from the shore, and I'm like, why are they running <laughs> farther <laughs> up on the, on the beach? You're probably okay. Yeah, but then the shark starts eating the dock, 
and like disconnects the dock so people on the dock were not safe i was like he's like munching them up i was like jesus yeah that was a pretty cool scene um we've got the scene where the daughter goes straight into the water well doesn't he eat someone on the dock and like that's where you one of the few times where you see a corpse just in the mouth of the shark uh, it's actually horrifying yeah there's a couple there's like probably three or four times where that happens where it's a dummy in his mouth and yeah. he's like and the legs are just sticking out and he's like mm. yeah and he's like taking him down to davy jones line. yeah but then he just it just disappears right um <laughs> i have to assume that all the best footage in this film was from another movie i think a lot of it's from the last shark yeah which is actually a pretty cool movie with uh, uh vic morrow um, he's like the bad coach from Bad News Bears. Mm. He's in a bunch of movies, but there's a lot of cool shark effects. The the helicopter scene, I think a lot of it was taken from the, the, the last shark. One of the worst scenes in this movie. <laughs> um, it's funny because on like uh, Severin Films that like put this out, like there are people that were begging for a release of one of the films that this movie just ripped footage off of, and they haven't done it yet. Like either it was. Uh, Last Shark or one of the other shark movies so yeah and I was like that's kind of fucked up that Cruel Jaws got <laughs> released before the one the original but Scream Factory announced it like many years ago but for a Last Shark yeah no Cruel Jaws. Jaws but then it just didn't happen it didn't happen because yeah. all the copyright issues yeah so somehow they were finally able to do it but I've been reading about this movie for years so like I was so thrilled to finally see it <laughs> yeah yeah it was uh yeah, this is the part where Vanessa dies, but it's it's so weird because, so <laughs> she goes into the water to save the girl, and Cruel Jaws is like like you see, it's like not clear what happened. It looks mm-hmm. like she died, but it doesn't show her being eaten. Right. That happens a lot in this movie where people just disappear when they're in the water. It's almost um, like the joke where it's like you see that she's in the water and then it's like cut to a funeral. <laughs> yeah, well, like... Oh, yeah, I guess she died. Well, like, so she, she survives. And I'm like, oh, she survived because they say to the girl, like, oh, she's she's okay. Mm-hmm. And then they cut to Hogan from the elevator with his daughter. And, like, then the next scene, he's like, you fat fuck, Vanessa's mm-hmm. dead because of you. And I was like, wait, so they lied to the little girl and she actually did die. <laughs> I was like, huh? Also, that guy's not that fat. Um, he's by far the fattest character in the movie. <laughs> That's the scene that I took the clip from because the acting, yeah, that was like the, the Oscar moment. <laughs> oh man amazing that part was more jarring than anything for me because <laughs> it, totally it wasn't really that funny I was just like wait so this is how we're telling that a character died now I think it's funny but at the time I was like what the fuck is this uh, so then they offer a reward um. So, okay, so this is where they get talking about the shark. All you have to do is put a bullet in its head, and it's fucked. <laughs> the tiger shark we're looking for is a homicidal maniac. I repeat, a shark is a homicidal maniac in this film. Wait, so so now there's a mafia fucking plot in this movie. Uh, or something. The reason I say this is because he's talking about their friends in New York, and they're going to be disappointed, and he's like, fucking fugazi i was like what is this this is like some weird tacked on mm-hmm. last minute yeah it t- um has nothing to do with the rest of the movie yeah my father used to use this for hunting 12 gauge cool <laughs> so the uh after the regatta uh the uh i guess like the fat fucks kid and his like friends go hunting to like they're like let's go kill this shark and you know re- get vengeance for all our friends and um that way like oh shit slipping says cool bangle shirt um 
But, um... <laughs> it's like... Um... They're, go, they're gonna go hunting for the shark. And so it switches over to, like... It starts playing the fucking Star Wars intro. Yeah, that's what we were referencing earlier. Like the most. But it's not like you know what it is, but it never actually plays Star Wars. It plays like the very the very beginning. Part yeah. Of the beginning. I was like, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You of all things in this movie, I didn't expect the Star Wars. Yeah. To start playing, and it happens twice. Yeah, but as soon as like it's like literally just the very very lead up to the actual before you can be like you still recognize what it is because it's the beginning before the actual song but no one ever has just played that part <laughs> so they just play that part and then it instantly switches over to some random shit uh, for obvious like reasons like a midi version of this like Star Wars rip off theme I mean it's no after that it's not Star Wars at all mm. it's just random bullshit <laughs> It's like, okay. Cruel Jaws. I was like, okay. Everybody's acting like it's a big joke. So, like, once they get on this boat and Vanessa's been killed and all this horrible shit's happened, Dag is like... He's, like, in the best mood yeah, ever. Yeah, he's, like, joking around like a <laughs> motherfucker and, like, other people are joking around and, like, even the main character doesn't seem to give that much of a fuck. And I'm like, this must have been filmed before everything else in this movie. Like, everybody's acting like it's a big joke. And I'm like, didn't your fucking girlfriend just die? <laughs> <laughs> and didn't your daughter, like, come fr- inches yeah. away from being munched by a shark? Yeah, there's, like, a note I have later where, they like... They left her alone, too. Yeah, that's, yeah, like, she, like, yeah, I have a note about that. What's wrong with these people? Um, but, like, a lady, the lady on the other boat gets completely spooked by just stock footage. <laughs> Uh, Ronnie. Well, speaking of that, okay, because yeah. that's one thing I thought of when I was a real little kid. Mm-hmm. I saw that like stock footage of the shark, the great white shark, like eating the chum. Oh, like whenever it like yeah, opens you its see mouth it's, like, and it's jaws, yeah, like, dislocate and stuff. Yeah. And I remember as a little kid, that was like I'd never seen anything that scary in my life. Yeah, I was like I can't believe real monsters exist in the world. Yeah, that was a a moment that I will never forget as a real little kid. Holy shit. And I was triggered by Cruel Jaws. You were triggered? <laughs> Damn. But there's a lot of that stock footage of, like, sharks yeah. munching on meat. A lot of it's pretty good, and some of it's shit. Yeah. Um, so Ronnie gets eaten alive, and they try to pour gas on it, and then they, like, light a flare, and then the whole boat just blows Dude, the fuck up. I lied. That's I, the best yeah. movie. That was so amazing. That was straight up Children of the Living Dead. Like, I don't understand how this makes any sense, like, what the end goal was in their mind. <laughs> but basically, the, they have the gas can, they're, like, pouring the gas, and it's like, it, And it's like, all, all of the characters huddle around this one area, too. Like, so they pour, yeah. they pour gas all over themselves, then they, like, like, uh, put flames over top of the image and then there's just a huge the yeah. entire thing explodes and it's like this is comedic genius yeah uh also there's like the like dag ship that's also out looking for the shark they somehow like get stopped by a random ass rope that's just in the sea which i was like how often does that happen like but they like untangle it and they're completely fine so it really didn't add shit except for like some tension a little bit <laughs> Um, as much as this kind of a movie can have tension, where the characters are really not, nobody gives a fuck about them. Yeah. Uh, so they go to the helicopter, and they lower down this meat hook to try to hook the shark, and it's huge, and apparently it's so strong that it can pull the helicopter down, and he pulls out, like, a plastic fake M16, because it's like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and apparently it's not doing shit, and they're, like, super close to the water, and the shark hits the helicopter, and then he, like, just jumps into the water like the the police officer. He's like... And I'm like, good lord. That whole scene was just, like, the pre... How shark movies get out of control now, like, uh... Jurassic Shark and Sharknado. Like, that was Mm -hmm. the Like, I think that was the very first, like, this is straight-up bullshit. Yeah. Because, like, the shark changes size so much in this movie, sometimes it's, like... A regular sized shark, and in that scene, it was like as big as a helicopter. Yeah. He's like, "It's fucking huge," and then it's like, <laughs> it like was sucking the fucking rope like a spaghetti. 
and like pulled the fucking helicopter down. Also, during that whole scene, instead of like cutting the line, the fucking police officer just kept talking shit to the helicopter pilot. He's like, "Pull it up, you fucking idiot!" And the guy kept telling him, "Like, I mean, we're stuck. We can't go anywhere." Um. To this next scene, Hulk Hogan's wearing like a fucking Pugsley outfit. He's got like a striped Beetlejuice shirt. <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Um. Oh, this is the part we were talking about. Susie's all alone at the aquarium. And that's when they like run back, and I'm like, "Why would you leave your young daughter alone in the aquarium when she literally is in a wheelchair?" And earlier, like she almost just got eaten by a fucking shark. Like, like, hey, I know you just got eaten by a shark, but I'm gonna get fucking super high and go off and try to fucking hunt that shark with these friends because we're gonna act like idiots. But also, as they run out of the room, there's a weird touch where... What's the main guy? Billy? Is that his name? Uh, yeah, I think that's is. right. He, like, turns back and thinks about grabbing the maps. Yeah. And then he turns the light switch off. And I was like, you don't see that very much in movies where people just turn the lights off as they exit a room. <laughs> it's like so well, not only that, but it was, like, totally, like, they, they were like, we have to have him look back and think about taking the maps because right. later on someone does well, take then, the maps. As soon as they get to the aquarium, Hulk Hogan's like, go get the maps. He's yeah. like, okay, why did he even come yeah. in the first place? Well, not only that, but, like, it's, it's like, foreshading for, foreshading, foreshitting for, like, these two henchmen that, like, end up going to the aquarium, like, right. the place and stealing the maps. And did you get a good look at the map? Oh, yeah, I have a, no I have a okay. huge thing about that, but, like, like this is hot stuff. They're like, the henchmen get there, and they're like, shit, this is hot stuff. On the map, they have a spot circled, and it says, it's here. <laughs> it's like an X and a circle and yeah, an arrow. And yeah, and it, it says, says it's, it's here. Dude. And I was like, who the fuck would circle a spot and do that when you're, like, not, like, three years old? That cracked me up so much, and it made me think, like, wait, is this a comedy? Like, were they? Yeah. Because that was so ridiculous. Yeah, like, it was like... They had, like... <laughs> the henchmen were straight up, like, comedy idiots. Yeah. It was like, everything looks okay here, out of nowhere. Wrong! That's, like, they say wrong, and then <laughs> fucking knock a, out both the dudes. That was a, it's like, what is this? More great comic timing. Wrong. Uh, the henchmen driving away on the boat. The scene goes on forever. Like when they're like in the morning stealing the boat or like getting away on the boat, they're like looking around. Like one of them is, and like they're driving away, and it literally goes on for like probably like three minutes. Yeah, I mean, if you cut out like all the unnecessary shots of like <sighs> the police officer walking to his car, yeah, like, th this movie would be like fifteen minutes long. Yeah, I mean, there's so much like unneeded. Yeah, they just chopped the fuck out of like. Uh, what's it called? Like, um, Last Shark and a bunch of other movies put mm -hmm. it together with like additional bullshit footage they wrote. Right. Uh, apparently, in this film, it's known that the shark has been trained in the Navy. Like, wh how the fuck is that even possible? When I heard that, I was like, <laughs> that actually would have been kind of an interesting thing to talk about. Not in the last two minutes of the movie. <laughs> right, it's at the very end of the freaking movie. They're like, oh, by the way, the shark was a fucking Navy SEAL. <laughs> right. What? Like, oh, by the way, uh, Hulk Hogan's an alien. <laughs> Hulk Hogan says, fuck, to the engine, and it just starts working. Like, there's a part where, like, it's they sabotage the engine, and he's, like, working on it, and he's like, that's the best I can do. It won't work. He goes back down and, like, hits it and says, fuck, and then it's fine. I'm like... It's the power of Richard Dew. Be careful. Remember, whatever happens, I love you. <laughs> that's what, uh, yeah. I'll get you, you motherfucker shark. The shark eats the whole boat. It, like, literally just disappears like the fucking Hitman boat. Uh, second use of the start of the Star Wars theme in this fucking film. Uh, so they jump in the water with no flippers on, and then it cuts to underwater, and they have flippers on. Um, that was, Honestly, though, that was one of the only, like, continuity... I mean, the whole movie's a fucking continuity error, but that was, like, the only one that was, like, blatant as fuck. Yeah. That I could really see. This whole ending was, like, so rushed. Uh, really yeah. Weird. So this makes me wish that I had possibly bought more stuff from Severin Film Company. Because I, like, missed that. Because we had a good time at that weekend. Uh, and it was a good trip, except for Lou Malnati's pizza. Yeah. The Lou, the Lou fucked me up. Avoid the Lou. Well, yeah, seriously, I made the fucking worst decision there. Uh, so the shark is, like, knocking into the boat, and I'm like, I don't really understand what the fuck is happening right now. It was just some, like, footage I think they had that they just 
threw in. Um, so now Bill's up, but like the other guy went down to get him. It was like a game of phone tag that they like. So he got out at the last second, and then somehow the shark's head, when they like blow up the fucking like underwater thing, blows up too, even though it wasn't under it wasn't near the wreck where it like was guarding um so the very end of this movie the seal slapped the fucking realtor guy on the ass and the old fat fuck went in the water and hulk hogan had a laugh while it zoomed in on the daughter's gross fucking teeth (laughs) for a free spring (laughs) yeah credits cruel jaws uh yeah the ending is it was just so like it was literally... that explosion. There's also like it shows them the guys just on the boat and the the camera like shows yeah. them, like we did it, yay! It makes me wonder how much like if they actually used like how did they know. know that like the shark was killed? Like no one was down there. They were just all on the boat. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, assumed... their plan was also like there was a thing where they said let's put all this like all this bomb shit on like it's it's thing it guards like it's uh, shunk, ugh, sunken wreck. And the, one of the guys was like, well, how the fuck would we know if it's even in there when we blow it up? And uh, I think one of the guys was like, oh, well, it always goes back there because it's guarding it and it was trained by the Navy. And he's like, oh, okay. That doesn't really explain anything and it no. doesn't make any sense. But it does end up working because apparently its head was tied to the fucking ship because when the ship blew up, its head blew up for no reason. But not like the rest of its body. It was just so close to the fucking explosion underwater that by proxy its fucking head disintegrated. Yeah. But the rest of its body was fine. And they somehow saw it underwater. Right. So it was a uh, a clusterfuck of an ending. But it wouldn't be any other way because the rest of this movie was a clusterfuck uh, of a film. Um, but I think this movie would be boring as fuck if they hadn't added in all that shit that they shot in Florida. Because all oh, that yeah. stuff was fucking priceless. It's amazing. Um, so, what what do you uh, what do you have for us next week? I guess unless you have any other notes for this one. No. Um, my, any final thoughts on Cruel Jaws? Um. Okay, so I watched like the special like features on this, and there was an interview with one of the guys. I think the guy that was talking about how he was the uh, the guardian for pussy or whatever it was called. Um, and it, one of the things he said was like, I guess uh, Bruno Mattei like had these like you know his dudes that came with him everywhere that were like Italian, and. Uh, <laughs> One of the things he said was that, like, he had a translator, and the translator, like, didn't give a fuck. So, like, in the script, it seemed like they had just changed a bunch of stuff. And, uh, <laughs> he, he was pretty sure, like, everybody was pretty sure that they had changed stuff, but they didn't know what it was. So they were, like, waiting for the translator to tell them what it was. And, uh, Bruno Day was, like, talking to him and doing all this stuff. And, uh... <laughs> They were waiting for directions and stuff, and so, like, the translator just, like, goes over to him, and he's like, okay, get ready. <laughs> and they were like, uh... He was like, just follow the stuff on the script. And they shot the whole scene, and he called cut, and he was, like, fucking cussing and screaming <laughs> and shit, like an Italian. And, uh, they were all like, eh. And that was, like, a common thing, I guess, because, like, the fucking dude didn't want to, like, do his job. And then there was another... Like, it seemed like this whole movie was, like, a, a product of its environment of just a clusterfuck of everything. Because, mm-hmm. like, Bruno Mattei didn't speak English, so it was, like... But he had these two super old, like, technical guys that he used on his, all of his films. And uh, they had, like, this rail track that, like, they had the camera on, and it was squeaking. And so, like, uh, the one of the guys that was an actor was, like, you know... Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we would do in other films that, you know, in base film school was you would just put talcum powder on stuff and it would, like, loose, it would make it, like, not make noise and stuff. And, uh, so these dudes grabbed a bunch of seawater, these two old dudes, and just started throwing it on the fucking iron tracks. And the fucking guys that were on the set that, like, worked with the cameras and everything that were, like, because they were all, almost everybody except for a couple people were American. They were flipping their shit because, like, 
they were like, we gotta fucking, they had to dry off the rails real quick because <laughs> so it wouldn't like rust up the fucking shit. And like, he, they were flipping their shit because it was like these two old dudes were throwing fucking seawater on these like old ass rails, or these rails, and it was like, just shit like that where it was just like, Sounds like there should be a movie about the making of Cool Jaws. Kind yeah, of like I mean, it the... was some interesting <clears throat> interesting stuff, but I don't really know who... I mean, that's literally that guy was the only person that was even on the special features. And it was like a Skype call because they did because, like, during COVID and stuff. So, yeah, there's not much info on this movie in general, so... Like, it's hard to find any information on, like, the people that were in it. Mm-hmm. Like, um... Like I said, the only two credits, or the only credits for that dude that's like a Hulk Hogan impersonator was like the Shadow Warrior 1 and 2 movies he did stand in work for and this is the only credit he's ever had as like an actual actor so after this he probably just said fuck that and I'm just gonna (laughs) do Hulk Hogan impersonations and stuff and that's it and then he probably passed away I assume by this point what? (laughs) he wasn't that old that doesn't mean he couldn't have passed away okay (laughs) I hope not. I like how that's the most shocked you've ever been in any of these well, he's things. He's like a young man, and that I guess it was like thirty. Oh, years. A young man? Yeah, he was old as Hulk Hogan. I bet he's by age. this point, I bet he was our age when he made this movie. Yeah, but he's probably Hulk Hogan's age now, I would assume. Hulk, Hulk Hogan's still alive. That doesn't mean he would be. <laughs> we need to. We need so to I just have to. Out. So like you're saying that like no matter what happens to me, I could just live to be a hundred. <laughs> No, I, just, I can't believe you would first jump to... He's probably passed away at this point. Well, I mean, like, what's the other option? He just stopped acting? Or he just... I don't know. Most men would rather die <laughs> than not be Hulk Hogan for one day. Somehow we need to find this out. So if anyone has any information on Richard Dew... If it's not on IMDb, we're fucked. Send it to the Buddy Boys. Yeah, I guess I'll have to do more research on this, but honestly, I probably won't. Um, All right, R.I.P. Richard Dew. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> you wouldn't listen. <laughs> and look what happened now. I'm leaning back in this easy chair. <laughs> okay, so you want me to guess what our next movie is? Yeah, I'll give you a hint. Oh. Well, I'm actually I'm going to blow your mind because I'm picking a comic book movie. Just don't blow your load. Okay. A comic book movie. Uh, it's not Steel with Shaq, is it? No. Okay. Um... Is this is this comic book movie from like a major comic book? No. So it's not from like Marvel or DC. I don't know, <laughs> but I, I think the, it's an obscure comic. It's from the nineties. Is it like uh, fuck? What's it called? Um. Uh. It's not the shadow, is it? No. Or um, is that came one, out around the same time? Or is that one movie with Billy Blanks? Where he's in that purple suit. The shadow? No. Well, maybe it was the shadow. I don't know. I thought that was Billy. Billy Baldwin. Um. Hmm. Give me another hint. Ernie Hudson has a small role in this movie. Oh, that doesn't help. That's like every movie. <laughs> no. You're like, Ernie Hudson is alive during this filmmaking. Um, so it's not like a DC film, it's, or it's a DC comic. I don't know if, if it was attached to any of the comics. No. I, I just don't know enough about it. Um, hmm. Here's a big hint. Um, the main actor was killed during the making of this movie. Oh, okay, everybody knows what this is. <laughs> Uh, Batman Begins. No. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Keaton. Yeah. The Crow. The Crow. Should be fun to talk about. Yes. Uh, it should be. Yeah, so The Crow uh, starred... Uh, Brandon Lee. Yeah. Son of Bruce Lee. Yeah. So, and he's famously known, sadly, for being killed on the set of the fucking film. With uh, a gun. Yeah. And not a real bullet, but a bullet that was lodged in the fucking gun itself. Yeah. So we'll talk about that more, probably. Uh, You can't really talk about The Crow without talking about that, but we'll talk about that next time. Um, Do you think that's how Richard Dew died? Um... (laughs) 
Were there any guns used in the cruel jaws? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was that shotgun that Yeah. But he made stuff after Cruel Jaws. Okay. So remember he was in Shadow Warriors. <laughs> His corpse was a stand in for well, Yeah, you don't have to be alive to be a stand in. <laughs> <laughs> like a skeleton. <laughs> That's true. Um Yeah, okay. Well Which do is better, Richard or Mountain? <laughs> I'm going uh, with Richard. Yeah, I don't really drink Mountain that Dew. That dude rules. That dude rules. Nah. Uh, yeah, I don't really fuck with Mountain Dew. It uh, fucks me up. When I was younger, I used to drink it a lot, but I had like a fucking conniption fit one time. <laughs> so, no Mountain Dew for me. Only Richard. Only Richard. I'm gonna have a conniption when I find out he's dead. When you find out? Yeah. Ah. I need confirmation. The confirmation from the Buddy Boy Nation <laughs> <laughs> will give you not happiness, but pure elation. <laughs> or wait, that would be... You're like, I'm having elation because I found out a man had died. <laughs> okay. I think we've dragged this shit on long enough. All right. It's time to next time. put it to an end, just like Richard do. I hope nothing happens. <laughs> That's what Richard do said. <laughs>